Today we're going to talk about joint wills. What are they and why might you want to have one? My name is Gregory Singleton. I'm an estate planning and probate attorney who lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I work for Signature Law, which serves the Twin Cities and greater Minnesota alike. Uh, if you like today's video, please feel free to smash that like and subscribe button. It really helps support the channel. And just one caveat, we are talking about Minnesota law here, though a lot of the concepts and theories will transfer to other jurisdictions. If you have a specific question, you might want to contact an estate uh, planning attorney who lives in your jurisdiction for a much better answer than I could give. Um, okay, joint wills. I guess I need to start with a confession. I screwed up. I was talking with a client who came to me and asked for a joint will, and my response was, I've never heard of a joint will before. I can see that they would be problematic. I don't think you can, they exist in Minnesota. Lo and behold, I did a little bit of research, and they do exist in Minnesota, and I had to go back to my client and say, I was wrong. Uh, joint wills do exist. I'm just not going to do one for you. And they were fine with that. We set up mirror wills and, and uh, moved on. But joint wills are a thing. So what exactly are they? It's one document, that's a will for two people, that uh, says that when the first person dies, the other person will receive all the assets, and when that person dies, they'll distribute the assets out in accordance with the beneficiary designation. Um, I thought it would have a problem with probate, but apparently it doesn't. They can be done. So not being familiar with these, I did a bit of research. I also asked the Minnesota Listserv, which is a listserv of a bunch of estate planning attorneys around the state. I asked them, what was a joint will and, and why haven't I heard of them before? And I got some really good answers. Uh, the primary reason that it seems that they joint wills came about was because in the days of the typewriter and the carbon copy, um, it was easier to make one document instead of two. It was just easier. Uh, in our one document is faster than two and it's easier to draft you don't have to type it up and it just saves time and therefore they devised the joint will today we have computers and we have printers and photocopiers and uh, we have templates in word and it's it's much faster to uh, make a document so we don't need the joint wills anymore in fact what we use today are called mirror wills and a mirror will is where one spouse will give or two spouses set up their wills such as the first person who dies will give all their assets to the other and then when that second person dies it will distribute out uh, to the beneficiaries as appropriate there's also joint trusts and there's also separate trusts which can do the exact same thing so why aren't joint wills a thing anymore um, why, why don't we use them uh, well, there's a couple reasons. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, they're unnecessary. We have computers now. And kind of along the same lines as since no one is using them, we don't have any templates to start with. And uh, there's no tried and true uh, documents that we can build from. So it's a little bit riskier to go out and just whole hat, just draft something from the start. The second reason that we don't use uh, joint wills anymore is they're, they're kind of useless. Uh, they, they don't do anything beneficial. Uh, the idea is like a, uh, the idea with them is, is what we do for uh, separate uh, revocable living trusts. And the, when we have separate revocable living trusts, what will happen is when one person dies, they will give an income to the second person. And uh, when the second person dies, what remains in the first trust and the, the other trust will each distribute in accordance with the trust. That way we guarantee an inheritance uh, goes in accordance with the person who first died as well as the person who died second. With joint wills, there is nothing stopping the individual from changing the will, the surviving spouse from changing the will after the first person has died. Even though it's a joint will, they can uh, immediately destroy it and say it's no good for anything else. Um, I'm gonna make my own will and I'm gonna give all my stuff to a completely different set of people. There's nothing stopping them from doing that. So having joint wills doesn't actually help um, uh, help uh, guarantee anything um, or do anything of the sort. In fact, the final reason is, is really the joint wills are kind of a holdout from the patriarchy when, when the, the husband would make all the decisions and do all the legal decisions and the, the wife would just go along with it. Uh, well, we don't have that anymore. Uh, so there's nothing keeping uh, the second spouse from changing the will. So there's no need for them. So the question is, yes, joint wills are a thing. Theoretically, can you have one? Sure. 
why would you want one? I'm not sure. Or should you have one? Probably not. And, and can you? Well, good luck on finding an attorney that will draft one. So overall, you're better off just doing separate mirror wills or if there's a real concern about uh, making sure your assets go to the right beneficiaries after you die, put together separate revocable living trusts. So there you have it, that's joint wills. They are a thing, but not really. Uh, if you like today's video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It does help support the channel. Uh, we have a new video coming out every other Wednesday, so if you subscribe, you'll get notice of that. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll make sure to get to them. Otherwise, this is Gregory Singleton from Signature Law.